going on guys? This is Donnie Do right here, guest corresponding for MimiRoad.com. We are with the uber talented, ridiculously successful, identical twins who just so happen to always stand out in the crowd, Coco and Breezy. Hey. hey. I'm Coco. And I'm Breezy. What's going on ladies? How are you today? We're good, how are you? I'm doing okay. You know, I have to step it up today for a little fashion because I know it's going to be interviewing you guys. How are you <laughs> we, feeling? We love it. We love Thank it. Thank you. I love those glasses. Thank I'm you. Are part of the new collection? Yes, they are. Our rainy days collection. Rainy days. Okay, so let's talk a little bit um, about a few things. So, you guys are from Minnesota. Yes. And how was that growing up in Minnesota, coming to New York? How was that transition? Well, growing up in Minnesota, the transition from Minnesota to New York, of course it was a it was a bit difficult, but us in Minnesota, we always stood out. And so we were very creative, and we, we created. So many people never really understood our style or our creative ways. So when we created eyewear, we initially used that to block ourselves from making eye contact with those people. But then on our 19th birthday, we went to New York just to visit, and people were wondering, like, where can I purchase these glasses from? And so in our minds, we were thinking, like, we have a product that could be hot in the market. We just quit everything and moved to New York. And so two weeks later, we went back to Minnesota. We quit our jobs, we sold our car, and we said, Mom and Dad, we're moving to New York. And they said, Girls, go for it. That's amazing. It's kind of one of those stories when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Exactly. It's kind of started like, you know, people, you don't want to make eye contact with them. So you kind of started creating a different look. Um, so at 19 years old, your family was very supportive about coming to a big city by yourself. Yes, yes they were nervous, of course. But they were like, you know what, girls, do it. Because at the end of the day, if you get, you know, if you get put in a box, if you, like, if you don't try it and you don't know, then you will never know, you know? So you have to, like, say we went, if we came to New York and it just went down, you know, at least I know. We tried, I tried. So do you think that being sisters is a hindrance or a help coming to New York and also being a part of this? I would say it's a lot of help. It's like you're not alone. Right. No matter if you're going through your struggle or being successful, you're never alone. And having that one person with you is always great. I think I read somewhere on a blog that one of you said that it's like one person living in two bodies. Yes. That's really interesting. That's a really interesting concept because you kind of hear about things with people who are twins. They kind of say they they feed off each other's energy. So yes, we do. having a business partner, that's always something you want to do. Be able to feed off energy with someone. Exactly. Okay, so let's talk a little about inspiration. Inspiration for the new lines and previous lines. Where did you find that from? Um, what we found inspiration is from our actual life story. The way it really started off with, when we first started like our, you know, designing our first collection officially, is um, we live in our own world, which is Planet C&B. I love that. And it's like Planet c and is its own world, and then we travel through different cities. So each collection is based off like the city. Right. So the first one was um, officially the 2020 collection mm -hmm. because we were 20 years old. We um, we feel like we have a couple of baby glasses on. We have 2020 vision, just yeah. oh. fashion, and also um, we live in 2020 right. in our minds. So we feel that and every time we, we always have to write a storyline to get us inspiration to sketch out the collection. Right. But we write all of our storylines on the plane. Oh. Yeah. The reason why we do that is because us being visionaries and us creating products that are new to the market, we have to explain the story and put our customer into that whole world so that they understand us. Because if you, a lot of times, do create a product before people are very, before they're familiar with it. So you have to get them familiar with it and create brand equity right. and figure out why do they want your product as opposed to someone who's a competitor. So. When you are designing, do you have a particular client in mind? Are you saying this is for the 16-year-old girl who lives in New York and she is funky, fresh, and cute, or this is for the rock star dude who's 35 and he still plays guitar in his basement? Like, how do you? Well, I would say throughout these two years that we've been in business, we kind of figured out our demographic. Okay. So, of course, in the beginning, we really didn't know exactly who we were designing for, but now, in the past few years, we know that we have. A very young following. We know that people are 18, 25. We know that the U.S. and like Europe love us in Japan, and we know like the people that we're designing for now. If I fell into your closet or open your closet door, what are the first two things I would see? The first all two black. things you'll see are all black. <laughs> ah, all so oh, black. We love all black. <laughs> and like, and leather. Black and leather. Black and leather, like, that's what I love Yeah. It's all for taking your outfit. Oh, thank you. But I think that black and all black is just so chic. 
I think a lot of times people in fashion, they're just throwing nonsense together. And I think that simplicity is the key. And I do have to say that um, we've always had like a very different style, but we've definitely grown. Like from kids, from younger, we used to just throw things together. And now I think as an adult, we just, we wear black, but we just throw layers together. We like different shapes. And I think that our glasses and our accessories, Oh, our glasses and accessories just kind of sets out the outfit. Our glasses are like the outfit and your clothing is the accessory. So, um, with, was it always eyewear? Do you see yourself going into fashion at all or is it just eyewear? Well, I mean, okay, this is our theory. Well, Coco and Breezy have been sketching clothes slash accessories when we were babies. They were young. I love that at the same time. Yeah. So, I mean, we have many talents in art. We're artists, we're not just I mean, artists. We even paint. Right. Dude, look, so this is my advice for designers. And we look up to, I say that Ralph Lauren is my mentor, even though I know him. Right. He's my friend in your head. Exactly. Yeah. Ralph Lauren is my friend in my head. He's my, my secret mentor that he doesn't know yet, but he's one of me because we're kind of taking the direction of Ralph Lauren. So, can I say one thing? Um, before you go into that, like me and Coco, we get more inspired by. The, entre the entrepreneurship story of it, not their, not like their actual art, or like their, like I'm not, I'm not inspired by Rock Lauren's clothing, I'm inspired by the way he was journey and how he started. Yeah, so then, you know, him as a designer, he started off with ties. He went to a department store and he went there like five times so they would take his tie. Then finally they took it. And so, the way he branded himself was he was known for the tie. And people were like, okay, well, I love Rock Lauren. So that's when he branched off to, you know, like clothes, shoes, or whatever, socks. Yeah, so with Coco and Breezy, he started out with sunglasses. So, a part of that story, um, a part of the story about um, you guys, you guys got here at 19. And how did you initially just, what did you say? You said, okay, everybody loves my glasses. This is an interesting project. Went back to Minnesota, started making things, and then came back to New York and was like, this is what we're doing. Well, what actually happened was, the true story is when we were actually 18, when we actually made the glasses in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And we had a fashion show, you know, a little, it was nothing like that. Little school situation. Yeah, one of those like small little fashion. We actually designed clothes. We had, we had garments and sunglasses. That's about. Yeah, and then um, we're like, we got weird grown. We we're 18, like, oh, for our 19th birthday, we're going to New York. Right. Like we are somebody. And you are. It's so, now. right. So for our 19th birthday, we came to New York. And people were just like, where can I get these glasses from? <clears throat> and we're like, we made it for ourselves. Right, right, right. You know? And it was and like crushed glass and mirrors and things like that. Oh, uh, no. You know? We actually started studs. We, made, studs. we started studs since day one. Okay, so with the success of all the things that you do, we've been written up in essence a multiple amount of times. They were on blogs and people taking pictures of you everywhere. What's next? Have you expanded to stores yet? What's new and what's the latest thing with you guys and your brand? Um, yes, we've actually been in stores since we, uh, a couple months after we started, yeah. Y'all, I was, y'all was not playing, that's what's good. Yeah, but I think that like right now we're in the process of like taking our brands to that next level. So now we're ready, we're ready to take on that, that larger market. And so we're, we're getting together and learning more about the business aspects of everything. Because Coco and Breezy, they're ready to be in competition with Rain Man, we're ready to collaborate with Mark Jacobs. So right now, we're at the point where like, we want to like help. Right now, there's too many youth that are committing suicide because of being bullied. So for our rainy day sunglasses, for every pair of sunglasses sold, um, a percentage goes to the Megan Muir Foundation because we want to make a difference, you know? It's like, we have to. And, and also, me and Coco can kind of relate to it because believe it or not, when we were younger, we were bullied. Right, that's and, why you guys started making eyewear. And that's why we started making eyewear. And it's the reason why we never went to a low point is because we had each other. But a lot of these kids, they have no one. Right. Not even their parents to help them. And so we want to be that, that voice that you know, that stands up for those people that don't know how to handle it right. and tell them that to stop bullying, that this isn't right, and tell them that you can be stronger and show them the different routes of how, how to stand up to a Give them a self-esteem that they stand Exactly. Up but at the end of the day, it's like, a lot of people, they might not understand you, but it's not the end of the world. 
they were yeah. going to show people that this more than life than just worrying about what, the, what a few people think of you. Yeah, to stay strong. So we say turn rainy days into happy days and stop bullying. We love that. We love that a lot. Well, again, ladies, thank you so much for stopping by and talking to us here at MimiRoad.com. I'm Donnie Do-Right, and um, we're saying au revoir. Coco Reezy.com. Also follow us on Twitter at Coco and Breezy and add us on Facebook.